Hello, my name is Stephanie Martin. I'm the president of the Sangam County Historical Society. This month's program is In the Beginning, a look at Sangamon County 200 years ago, presented by Curtis Mann, the librarian at the Sangamon Valley Collection at Lincoln Library in Springfield. This is starting our year of the bicentennial of Sangamon County 2021. Hope you enjoy. I would like to thank everyone for joining me today for this program regarding the history of the um, early times in Sagamon County. Modern day Sagamon County is just a small portion of a larger area that was once known as the Sangamo Country. This area, which can go as far as east as Macon County, takes in the Sangamon River and all of its tributaries and extends all the way to the Illinois River. This map shows the Sangamo Country as a more concentrated area with Springfield as its center. The map also shows a trail or trace that connected St. Louis with Peoria. This trace was given the name the Edwards Trace after territorial governor Ninian Edwards used it to take a force of Illinois militiamen north during the War of 1812 to fight the, north, the Native American tribes, primarily the Kickapoo. I imagine that the troops traveling through the Sangamo country got a glimpse of the area and made note of the land. Their reports to family and friends of this new land was part of the beginning for the settlement in this area. Other groups of militiamen known as rangers would have also been patrolling this area during this time of the War of 1812. After the War of 1812, settlement would begin in earnest. The first European American to settle in Sagamon County was Robert Pulliam. In the fall of 1817, Pulliam led a small group of people and a herd of cattle from their homes in St. Clair County to a spot along Sugar Creek in modern day Ball Township. A cabin was built and the group stayed there over the winter of 1817-1818. In the spring, the group grazed their cattle and made sugar from the sugar maple trees located nearby. The group then returned to St. Clair County. This photograph shows the great grandson of Robert Pulliam, Arthur Pulliam, standing near a marker noting the location of the cabin. Reports of the Sangamon country soon attracted other visitors and settlers. Men like Elisha Kelly from North Carolina came to explore the area. He returned home to tell his family about the area and encouraged them to leave their home and to settle in the in Sangamon County. Newspapers, articles, and letters also contributed to the attention given to Sangamon County. As an example, this article shown here appeared in the July 10th, 1819 issue of the Edwardsville Spectator. It was written by someone who identified himself as an agriculturalist. The article gives a glowing description of the Sangamon River and the land surrounding it. It notes that 300 people are already living in the area. I found that this article was copied by other newspapers back east, helping to spread the word of the Sangamo country. Other groups and travelers like German traveler Ferdinand Ernst also traveled to this area to see and explore uh, Sangamon country. Ernst noted that there were 60 families already laying out farms along the timberland of Sugar Creek. Another inducement for settlement was the treaty signed with the Kickapoo Nation on August 6, 1819 at Edwardsville, in which the federal government purchased an estimated 10 million acres. The article notes that 300 families were squatting on land in the area, and this was an inducement for the Kickapoo to leave. Just like the Sangamo article, this article was copied as well and appeared in newspapers back east. On January 30th, 1821, Sagamon County was created by the G Illinois General Assembly. The county was formed from two parent counties, Madison and Bond. The western half of the present day county was located in Madison and the eastern half in Bond. The original county was much larger in size from the present day county. The boundaries were fairly simple. The eastern boundary was the third principal meridian. The southeast corner of the county started at a point on Township 12 North and followed the Meridian North until it reached the Illinois River. The river served as the western boundary of the county. This boundary followed the river down to a point where the mouth of Balance Creek meets the river. 
the boundary followed the creek up to its source. This creek was generally located in the southern southeasterly to a point where it intersected with the northwest corner of Township 12 North and then followed east to the place of beginning. Modern day Sagamon County made up just a small portion of this county. All or parts of 12 different counties originally comprised the county. A little research that I conducted in 2005 on men listed in the first tax list assembled in the county found that the majority of the men whose birthplace could be identified came from the Upland South, about 70%. Individuals from the Mid-Atlantic and New England state comprised 25%. Now this study identified the birthplaces of 172 of 384 men, which was about 44%. So it was just a little less than half of the men identified. But one of the articles, the Sangamo article that I was reading actually said that the majority of people were coming from the state of Kentucky, but this, research that I found showed the majority of the men identified had been born in the state of Virginia, but likely had come through the state of Kentucky as well. This tax list was one of the first documents created in Sangamon County that showed people living in the county, and that's why I studied it, just to see who was really listed as being uh, residents of this area. This map of Sagamon County was drawn in the 1830s by a man named Matthew Marsh and only shows the southern end of the county. It notes the locations of groves, creeks, and provides a better idea of just where people had settled in the county. It's a wonderful source because it does show um, all the names of the creeks and some of the groves around here, uh, such as Elkhart Grove, Irish Grove, Sugar Grove, Clary's Grove, and a lot of these early settlements were noted for being located near these groves or by the creeks that they had settled along, such as Sugar Creek, which was probably one of the, the largest concentrations of settlement in Sagamon County at this time. If you'll notice, just north and east of Springfield, there was a settlement called Fancy Grove. This was one of the earliest but least known settlements in Sagamon County. It was located along the headwaters of Fancy Creek about three miles southwest of Williamsville. Fancy Grove was unique in that most of its residents consisted of families from the state of New York. One of those residents, Stephen Stillman, is credited with naming both the Grove and Fancy Creek. Rather than being a platted town or village, Fancy Grove was a collection of farms. The Stillman family, consisting of the mother, Abigail, along with her sons, Stephen and Isaiah, and a daughter, arrived in Sagamon County in the spring of 1820, when it was still part of Madison County. James Stewart, who married to Roxanna Stillman, arrived in Sagamon County in 1819, but joined the Stillmans upon their arrival. Another large family from New York, the Phelps family, also arrived in Fancy Grove in 1820. Stephen Phelps had served as a judge in his native state and migrated west with his sons and daughters to the Illinois frontier. One son, Alexis, purchased land just south of the Grove. The first family, the last family group consisted of three men who were related through marriage, Charles Boyd, John Dixon, and Oliver Kellogg. Boyd and Kellogg were married to sisters of John Dixon, and Dixon was married to a sister of Boyd's. Boyd and Dixon were tailors in New York City who struck Illinois in 1820. Fancy Grove did not last very long, and by 1825, most of the people had dispersed. The Phelps family had moved to Fulton County, and Boyd, Kellogg, and Dixon had moved north. They had worked with driving cattle and creating trails to go to Galena during the lead mine strikes that were going on up there at the time. So Fancy Grove just faded away into obscurity. But it was just an example that I wanted to point out of these concentrations of families and groups that would have been the first settlers in the area. And of course, this group actually came from a specific part of a state like New York, which was kind of New York, kind of uh, special in the sense that most of the states of, were represented were from Virginia and Kentucky. 
When the county was created, all the land was still owned by the federal government, having purchased it from the Kickapoo tribe. The government was in the process of getting the land surveyed into townships and sections in preparation for public sale. This means that everyone settling in the county was basically squatting on public land, waiting for the opportunity to purchase it. And many of them had come here be just for that purpose because they had actually have a little bit of time to um, occupy land without having to purchase it. But not having been able to purchase it, they also took the chance a risk in a sense of, of creating a cabin or building a cabin, um, plowing land and, and improving it in a sense to uh, actually lose it in sales because there, at this time, there was no guarantees of them being able to purchase land. At other times, this guarantee, also known as a preemption, would have allowed the settlers to have the first chance to uh, buy the land when it came up for sale. And in a sense, a lot of them did um, improve their lands and even sell those improvements to others so that they could purchase it from the federal government because they may not have had the money at the time to purchase the land because the federal government in 1821 was charging $1.25 per acre, a bargain today. As soon as the land was surveyed, the settlers would lay claim to the land they wanted they would have to wait until the fall of 1823. This image shows a portion of the survey map created for what is Springfield Township today. Note that this map was certified on December 20th, 1821. So the federal government went out and hired these teams of surveyors, such as this man, Mr. A. Langham, to go through the state and the areas that had not already been surveyed and to lay out what were called townships. Townships were these square blocks of land that were six miles wide and six miles long and consisted of 36 sections that were arranged in rows of six across and six down. So each section would have been a mile wide in a sense. One of the first actions needed with the formation of the county was the creation of a government Counties at this time were governed by a commission form of government. Three commissioners were elected at large from the county. These men were Rivers Cormack, William Drennan, and Zachariah Peter. Cormack was a Methodist minister who did not remain in the county very long. Drennan settled in Ball Township in 1818 with a large group of his family. Peter also settled in Ball Township. In fact, he found Pulliam's empty cabin and moved in with his family. Peters later had to relocate the, when the Pulliams returned. The first Sagamon County Sheriff was John Taylor. John Taylor was one of the first settlers in the Sagamon County area, but later had moved up to Springfield and became one of the creators of Springfield or uh, the men that bought one of the four quarter sections that would later comprise the city. The three commissioners quickly began to make appointments for other county positions, including the following positions, such as Charles R. Matherney, Matheny, who was a one-man government in my sense because he worked as the clerk of the commissioner's court, but he also served as the clerk of the circuit court and the probate. So basically his job was to run county government. At the time, because there was no land to record, he was also the recorder of deeds. He didn't have to bother with that, but he would have been busy with uh, marriage licenses and things like that. James Sims was the first county treasurer, but county officers were required to provide a bond and he did not do that. And so the county commissioners replaced him with a man named George Hayworth. Some positions that were not um, known today anymore, but may have been heard of were called Justices of the Peace. And Abraham Duff, Stephen French, John Lindsay, John Robeson, and Stephen Stillman were appointed um, to this position. They were actually nominated to uh, the Illinois governor, and then he would have actually um, appointed them based on his, their recommendation. And these men would have been located all across the, the county to help serve as judges for uh, 
settling debts and things along those lines. The Office of Constable was another one that we don't hear much about anymore. And it was basically a role that helped with the Justice of the Peace to help serve warrants as well as to um, help keep the peace um, in the areas around the county. Other positions that would have been selected would have been like election judges, overseers of the poor, and road supervisors. These are positions that would have been appointed as well and um, would have paid a small salary to the appointees. This map shows um, basically um, where Springfield would have been located at the time. Um, one of the first duties of the county commissioners was to select a site for a temporary county seat. The seat was required to be located near the center of the county. The commissioners met in the cabin of John Kelly and chose a spot in the corner of his field to construct the county's first courthouse. This would have been in the area known as the Kelly Settlement. This is the family that Elisha Kelly had encouraged to come back from the uh, North Carolina area and settle. And another reason why it was explained that this Springfield area was chosen was because um, the Kelly Settlement was one of the densest uh, areas and that people coming to do county business would have been able to stay in the cabins of the Kelly family because at this time there was no town, there was no hotels or any place for them to stay at the time. The courthouse was located at the northwest corner of 2nd and Jefferson Streets in downtown Springfield. This map shows the fact that the two roads or ro two roads or traces cross near Springfield. This would have made the location of the county seat near this intersection logical. Now talk about your public works projects. The commissioners hired John Kelly to build the courthouse for the price of $42.50. The county jail cost twice as much almost at a price of $84.75. An important figure in the history of Springfield arrived in 1821. Elijah Isles, shown at right, was, was originally from Bath County, Kentucky. He had spent time in Franklin County, Missouri, working as a clerk and speculating in land. He determined that Missouri would remain a frontier state during his time so that he, would, he decided to explore the Sangamon Valley of which he had heard of. Isles decided to open a store in Springfield until the land sales took place. He bargained for the erection of a storehouse to be made of hewn logs. Isles then purchased his goods in St. Louis and had them shipped to Beardstown on the Illinois River and then brought overland. Isles would go on to become one of the founders of Springfield. And the building shown at left is the Isles store as it was being taken down in the 1890s. And you can see the hewn logs that of course had been added to. Um, after Isles had used it, it had been sold as a store and then later was used as a residence. This ends my talk about um, the forming of Sangamon County in 1821, but I do want to suggest some further reading. One of the books that we have is called The History of the Early Settlers of Sangamon County by John Carroll Power. And this book is available online. It has been digitized, and I believe you can find it through uh, Google Books or other sources. And it's just a wonderful resource. Um, it was created for the Old Settler Society of Sangamon County. This society was created in the 1850s to note the people who had settled in Sangamon County prior to the winter of the deep snow of 1830-31. One of the actions of the society was to determine who the earliest settler was. After some debate, Robert Pulliam was determined to have had that honor. This book is just full of the histories of these snowbird families as they became to be known with little stories about the conditions in the early days. John Carroll Power, with the assistance of his wife, actually spent two years um, collecting information, receiving and writing letters uh, to all these different individuals that, had, have, that were living in Sagamon County, but had also moved on to other counties. Um, it's a wonderful source of genealogy 
because it does go into at least four generations of, of individuals and their families. But what I find interesting is just those little tidbits, as I mentioned, where somebody talks about you know, their time spent and in, in many instances, the simpler life was, was more enjoyable to them. This was published in 1876 as part of the, uh, bicen or the, the centennial of the country. Two other books that I would love to uh, recommend to you as well. Um, one is called Sugar Creek Life on the Illinois Prairie by John Mac Farragher. And this book focuses on the history of the Sugar Creek area and Ball Township in the southern part of Sagamon County. And it goes all the way back to the prehistory of the area and follows through up into the 1865 timeframe. And what I like about this is that it has a lot of information in it regarding the pioneer times and the formation of the county. It goes into a lot more depth than what uh, I covered here, of course, and I think that the first few chapters would give you much more information in regards to uh, the formation of the county, as well as just what life was like for these early pioneers as they settled in and began uh, farming and, and producing in livestock. The last book I'd recommend is one called The Sangamo Frontier, History and Archaeology in the Shadow of Lincoln by Robert Masram. And what this book does is that it combines the archival history of the area with the archaeological work that Mr. Masram has performed through the years. And a lot of this archaeology has been focused on sites here in Sangamon County and what was part of Sangamon County at the time, um, the 1821 such as Elkhart Hill, New Salem area, as well as uh, even downtown Springfield at the Isle store. And so it's one of the more contemporary sources of information about um, life, as well as the material culture of the, the families that were living here in Springfield. So I do hope that you enjoyed this program. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at my work number, 753-4900 extension 5634 or you can email me curtis.man at lincolnlibrary.info. Thank you.